All right, November 1st, and it's time to start Indie Month, where we take a look at those creative individuals who are redefining the gaming industry without that copy and paste corporate bullshit. So today, I'm looking at a game that I pretty much just bought in women, and found it, you know, be somewhat enjoyable. Shank is an action style beat em up, but instead of being like Streets of Rage or Final Fight, this is more like Bayonetta or Devil May Cry, but only in 2D. And despite its cartoon art style, this game is violent. I'm talking Robocop meets Braveheart violent. There are just gallons of blood all over the place. The developers, Klee or Clay, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, did a wonderful job with just absolutely everything, and for a team of only 11 people that started in 2005, they've churned out quite a few games since then. Just shows what you can do when you don't have a corporate logo looming over your head. And I know that there's going to be someone that's going to say it because there are people out there that are just that stupid. But Retro, it was published by EA and those are the corporate douchebags that you hate. You do know that there's a difference between developers and publishers, right? Hold on. I think I hear a stupid comment being deleted. There's just so much to praise in this game. Look at those graphics, they're beautiful and so fluid. The art style reminds me of Penny Arcade, but only more angular. I believe this was done in Flash just from the look and feel of the animation. I think that I read that it was done in Flash, but don't quote me on that. The game setting is set in what looks like the modern day West. If you've seen any of the movies from the Mariachi Trilogy, also known as the Mexico Trilogy, like Desperado, you know what I was talking about. Not only does the music reflect this setting perfectly, but it also complements the story. It's a story of revenge. You play as Shank, a former hitman for a mafia group, and they killed your girlfriend. And it's your job to dish out your own special brand of justice with knives, guns, and a freaking chainsaw. Soak it in, wussies, because it doesn't get any manlier than that. You'll need a controller for this game, as there's too many commands for a keyboard, but if you want a good challenge, forgo a controller. You can jump, grab and throw, block, dodge, and throw grenades. You have a light attack with your knives, a heavy attack with your chainsaw or other large weapons, and you have a long range shooting attack, and you can use all of these to perform combos on your opponents. Like I said earlier, it's like Streets of Rage meets Devil May Cry. The only thing you can't do is move from the foreground to the background, but that's alright because it's not needed. This is one of those games where you're a one-man army, so are you a bad enough dude to hit yourself in the dick with a hammer? Wait, that doesn't sound right. Save the president? Save the princess? No, that's not it either. Oh, god damn it! what is it? There will be a ton of enemies on screen, and you better be ready to button mash like you never button mashed before. The action is really good, it just never ends. It's like playing John Woo's Hard Boiled or Shoot 'em Up. Just never stopping, constant over the top action, and it flows perfectly. I know I say that for a lot of 2D games, but if you can't feel the flow when playing a game like this, it just doesn't feel that fun. Look at Rayman Origins and Donkey Kong Country. Both games where I praise the flow of the game, the more the game flows, the more natural it feels. Cause when you're feeling the flow, ah screw it. Speaking of massive amounts of enemies, I would like to see some more variety in them. There's really only three main types that you encounter. There's melee enemies, shooting enemies, and large enemies. With the only variation in what weapons they have on them. Yes, there was little variation in enemies in games like this from way back in the 16-bit days. That's because the cartridge could only hold so much memory. This is something that's stored on a hard drive, giving you a lot more room to work with. Some of the enemies take cheap shots at you. Like the big enemies that just run across the screen, or the boss that goes by the name Angelo, who is probably the cheapest boss. Speaking of bosses, they have easy to recognize patterns and you can use the environment to expose a weakness and knock off about a quarter of their health so the boss fights aren't really that challenging. You also have infinite lives and there's a ton of checkpoints, so dying is really just a minor inconvenience. Oh, you died? Tell me how respawning with full health and ammo 10 feet away is so frustrating. Really, the only reason why you'll die is just getting run over by the swarms of bad guys. But the difficulty is at a decent level. It's got the right amount of balance, making it an enjoyable challenge. The level design is pretty well done. They're designed like large jungle gyms, allowing you to climb and run along walls, swing from objects, and slide down ramps. And there are a lot of levels, and they're all huge, and combined with the very repetitive gameplay, Shank starts to overstay its welcome after about two hours. If the story was more interesting, then yeah, it would be better, but I do find the story very one note and boring. I know Shank is out for revenge, and that's all that drives him, but the villains are more interesting than him. Yeah, we have flashbacks that shows what happened to Shank, but there's no character development, so why should I care about him? 
Let's put this in contrast with Jack 2. In the beginning, Jack is tortured for who knows how long, and when he gets free, he wants revenge on Praxis. But there's so much more going on that Jack gets caught up in, so he actually develops more as a character. As I said about the enemy variety needing more, same goes for the story. Back in the cartridge days, you could get away with a very basic plot. Nowadays, you really can't because of how games have evolved and have become more advanced. I don't think you could take an old game and just step into the current generation of gaming without going further. Look at the new Super Mario Bros. games. They brought that old school gameplay into the current generation of gaming, but took it really far by adding a bunch of levels, taking different paths, and giving you different items to use. Shank just stays in the comfort zone. Yeah, you get different weapons, but there's really no reason to use them all. Why use the chains or chainsaw when the machetes work faster and more efficiently? Why use the Uzi when the shotgun is more effective as all of your enemies will be at close range 99% of the time? I found myself using the machetes and shotgun almost exclusively because the enemies come at you in these huge waves. It's better to attack faster than to move slower just to hit harder. My recommendation is to play this game in short bursts because it will get boring after a while and I couldn't force myself to keep going after playing it for three straight hours because I got so bored. At first you're thinking it's really fun, there's tons of action and blood and guts and ass are splattered everywhere. But the novelty just wears out and not even the story or cutscenes help drive the player to keep going. But we know how it's going to end. Shank shanks his way through the cannon fodder of enemies, kills the head bad guy, and gets his revenge. Yeah, this pretty much ranks at 10 on the cliche meter, and if I told you more about the story, a blood vessel would burst in your brain with how stupid it is. Okay, I'll tell you. In the co-op mode, you learn that Shank is a hitman for a mob boss. Shank's girlfriend ends up getting in the way, and the boss orders Shank to kill her. And he would have obeyed the order, but he finds out that the girl is pregnant with his child. And Shank doesn't do it because the mob boss taught him that family is what's most important. And then the boss said that if he knew that Shank's girlfriend was pregnant, he would not have ordered her to be killed. But what does Shank do? He runs away with her, not saying anything to anyone, and the boss then orders them both to be assassinated. However, if Shank had told his boss that the girl was pregnant with his child and that he was going to be a father, his boss, who told him that family was the most important thing in the world, would have called off the hit and none of this would have happened. If they left out the girl carrying Shank's child and he refused to kill her out of love and didn't have the boss teach him about family, then that would make sense. But because they did that, there's a huge plot hole. And then there's one game-breaking flaw, and that's how it responds to the controls. There's times when the game doesn't respond to the controls or delays them. I've had instances where I went to throw a grenade, nothing happened, and so I hit it again, and two grenades were thrown. I've had times where the dodge button did not work at all, and this was a real problem during the Angelo boss fight as the dodge didn't work a majority of the time. Sometimes Shank wouldn't fire his gun or just wouldn't turn around to face another enemy. And there's times where Shank would just not stop doing a combo. All of this because sometimes the game has delay in responsiveness. I believe that Shank has a lot of potential, but they just stayed within their comfort zone. It looks like a really good game, but looks can be deceiving. Don't get me wrong, it is a fairly decent game and it's worth a try, but I would recommend getting it on sale or something.